In the last video, we looked at the graph of secant. In this video, we're going to take a look at the graph of cosecant. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and try to graph that. You're going to go through the same procedure that we went through for cosine. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So start by graphing sine just as a dotted curve, and then use that to graph its reciprocal. I'm asking you to graph exactly one period, start and end in an asymptote, and make sure you label the locations of the asymptotes, and also the important points, okay? And then once you've done that, tell me the period, the domain, and the range, and then tune back in and we'll go over that together. I've started the problem here by just drawing one period of sine as a dotted curve. Now sine is kind of nice because it's zero at the beginning and the end of this period that goes from zero to two pi. And of course where sine is zero is where cosecant's gonna be undefined and that's where we're gonna have our asymptotes. So the y-axis will be an asymptote, we'll have an asymptote at pi, and we'll have an asymptote at two pi. And just like with cosine and secant, the asymptotes divide things into intervals where sine is positive, and therefore its reciprocal will also be positive, and where sine is negative, so that its reciprocal cosecant will also be negative. So now we just flip the bumps, and the same thing happens here, that the high point of sine is at 1, and the reciprocal of 1 is 1. So when I graph cosecant, the low point of cosecant coincides with the high point of sine, and the high point of cosecant coincides with the low point of sine. This would be exactly one period starting and ending at an asymptote. So I didn't need to adjust if I just graphed from 0 to 2 pi as I did with cosine, because if cosine doesn't start at a 0 value, so I don't want to actually start my graph of secant at 0, because then I'd be sort of starting in the middle of one of these u's. Okay, so very, very similar to what we saw with secant. The period is again going to be 2 pi. Okay. The period is going to consist of one u that opens up and one u that opens down. Okay. The domain, this time the asymptotes are at different places. I can see they're at 0 and pi and 2 pi for the period that I drew. They're going to be at any angle whose, that pa whose terminal ray passes through one of these points. Now these points were odd multiples of pi over 2. These are the even multiples of pi over 2. But an even multiple of pi over 2 is the same as just a multiple of pi. And I can sort of see that. That was 0 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi. The next one's going to be at 3 pi. Over here I'd have one at negative pi. So my domain is all x such that x is not a multiple of pi, where don't forget to tell me that that n is representing an integer. <laughs> and the range looks like it's going to be the same as secant. We've got 1 and higher, negative 1 and lower, with this no man's land in between. So we have negative infinity to negative 1, union 1 to infinity. 